Here we are at the Blue Pencil Gallery in Honiton. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, mate. Uh, well, welcome to the Blue Pencil Gallery. Um, well, what can I say? It's an all animation gallery. Um, the reason for that is that um, uh, my partner, Anna, uh, she's a talent here. She was an animator for um, 30, 40 years, for, uh, first in London for um, Disney, uh, and then later on Warner Brothers and Mac Rowling on Futurama awesome. in, in LA. Um, and back now for family reasons back in Honiton. So when we opened the gallery, we thought, let's make it all of, all animation. I'm a huge fan of yeah. animation of all sorts anyway. Uh, so, awesome, yeah, incredible. Yeah. Uh, it's a sort of, um, I think animation art is, is not really appreciated just because it's it, uh, not taken ser as a serious art form because it's colorful and aimed at children and things like that. But, yeah. you know, it doesn't. Um, uh, you know, it, it doesn't take anything away from the massive skill there is. You know, yeah, if I yeah. show you one of the pieces, if you just uh, stand on one side, show you one of the pieces that we've got here. We, we sell a whole Ooh. mix of, um, right? So we sell a whole mix of um, uh, things, uh, 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 reproductions of this, that, and the other. But um, also a lot of original art. That's an original drawing from The Simpsons, for instance. And that is from. Do you know what that's from? Oh, I'm sorry, you're gonna be closer, girl. That's He-Man. No, that's no, not He-Man. No. Now, I, I'm not that familiar with it. Uh, I've only seen a couple of episodes of He-Man. Um, but, you know, as a drawing, and all these notes and things, I think, make it yeah. for me. But as a, it's, as a drawing, it's beautiful. And it's not just the skill of the, of the artist in being able to draw a figure like that. It's the fact that in animation, that artist knew where that was going yeah. in the next frame and the frame after that and the frame after that. It's, it's, it's a part of the process. And all of this, all of these notes around here and they're notes for other animators, yeah. people like, um, they're called in between, so this would be a keyframe, keyframe drawing. It's got a circle around the numbers, so it's yeah. a keyframe drawing. A number of these would be produced by the artist and then other artists called in between artists, uh -huh. not surprisingly, because they do the bits in between. Yeah. Uh, they would fill in fill in the gaps with the the drawings, and there'd be all sorts of notes about how many drawings have to go from one keyframe to another. Um, uh, and this is this is on its original pegboard paper. These holes here are to locate each sheet in precisely the right place. Um, and I look, what I also love about these drawings is they also illustrate why we're called the Blue Pencil Gallery. You can see yeah. that most of this is in, a lot of this is in black, little bits that you can see, but there's lots of blue underneath. Yeah. Uh, animators roughed out their ideas in pale blue pencil, a certain color of pale blue pencil, uh, which if it went under camera, a drawing like this wouldn't go under camera, but if it went under camera, the, um, the blue doesn't show up under camera, so oh, they right. don't need to rub it out. Nowadays, they, uh, with computers with it drawn, on. You still have to be able to draw, and people say, "Oh, it's all done by yeah, computer yeah, yeah. now." You still have to draw. You mm -hmm. know, um, uh, it's with a system called onion skinning where they they draw, they rough out their ideas, and then you can press a button, go to another layer, and put the black pencil line on top, and the um, uh, previous uh, the, the all the blue uh, yeah. can as it was blue that can just be erased later. But this is a, and all, everything with this That's stamp in the corner really is original good. art. Uh, but we've got reproductions of various things as well, um, and, and posters, and original cells. The cell, the celluloid. This is from the Pink Panther. So this, in all its detail, this is uh, this is hand painted. Uh, oh, wow. I'll show you when we go back. I mean, the detail of that. I'll show you. But we've got one over there that I can show you the back of. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but all precisely hand painted, and at least twelve drawings per second. Oh wow. So in something like the snowman, mm -hmm. even if it was just a single figure, but it gets more complicated when you've got lots of figures moving in the same uh, moving in the same frame. You know, there's over a million drawings uh, oh, wow. in the snowman and it was 30, 35 minutes long or something Raymond Riggs is the snowman. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. There was uh, Ordinarily, there's, uh, when it's shot under film, there's 24 f um, frames in a second. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So uh, they didn't, that's an awful lot of work if you're going to do a new drawing or a sculpture or whatever, you know, stop frame animation in um, for one a second. So they work in twos. So mm -hmm. ordinarily you would do a drawing uh, and that would be exposed for two frames. So you work mm -hmm. 12 drawings, 12 frames, uh, 12 drawings per second. Right. Oh, um, wow. But right from the word go, Disney said, no, I want it more fluid than that. You're doing a new drawing every frame. Wow. So in a Disney one, even the early ones like um, no, no, uh, no pressure, then. no, it's, uh, yeah. and and he just kept making it more and more complicated. Uh, Snow White. When was Snow White, Anna? Uh, Thirty-six. Yeah. Thirty-nine. Thirty-seven. Yeah. yeah. Right. Very good. Um, yeah. the, that was um, um, the, that was the first introduction of a multi-plane camera. And Walt Disney came up with this idea because he didn't like the idea when you zoomed into yeah. uh, a scene, um, uh, the the uh, the depth of the of the of the scenery didn't change. Yeah. Like if you you know going between trees or something like that, you know you don't get this parallax difference between the different layers of the trees. So he came up with the multi-plane camera, which was a, a film from above, and it was a massive. It was five or six layers, wasn't it? Five or six layers of scenery plus the action layer. Uh, so all of these parts of the scenery were moving as well as the plane that has got Bambi or whatever it might be yeah. moving around on it. They were all moving. That's incredible. Uh, so, I mean, the people, the animators must have been going, my God, you can't make it more complicated. Yeah, that's you incredible, know, man. Uh, yeah. He had his vision, though, didn't he, Walt Disney? He had his vision. Yeah, And, and he succeeded what he wanted to yeah. get with yeah. his vision. So yeah. and as soon as he had his, as soon as he wanted... He knew, he knew what the picture he wanted, didn't he? What his outlook he wanted to look like. Yeah. And so he perceived what he. Yeah. Got, yeah absolutely. He? Yeah. The um, um the the um, what I was going to show you. Uh, awesome, what was I going to show you? Um, uh, well, what else have we got? Well, we've got some of Anna's own creations here. This picture here of, of two dodos. Um, Anna during lockdown. Um, uh, produced uh, a, um, a model of a dodo. She's a great fan of Alice in Wonderland, uh, and she did her own take on the dodo, uh, which was sculpting um, this in the uh, uh, this dodo in the cabinet. He's called Augustus Dodo, uh, and she sculpted that during lockdown for something to do. And all of the pictures, there's a whole range of dodos in different poses with different backgrounds there. They are all photographs of Augustus Dodo that are then colorized and put into computer backgrounds uh, to give that range, uh, range of pictures there. So we say that everything to do with animation is um, what's popular um, uh, um, at the moment is uh, a lot of Japanese animation yeah. from going back to the 80s actually, even that is now vintage. Um, a bit depressing that things in the 80s are vintage when you're yeah, married. Yeah, it's when I was born in the 80s. Yeah, yeah, you're vintage. <laughs> right, uh, the, um, but Japanese anime stuff um, yeah. uh, from Studio Ghibli in particular, so we've got dozens of pictures and, and, and things like this. Totoro is very, very, uh, it's very um, popular. And we've got a squishy Totoro and a lamp Totoro and a tiny Totoro and a blue Totoro and every, everything you can think of. Uh, Totoro um, music boxes with the theme of the uh, uh, theme of the program. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe do we have this? Um... He's the talker. Get its best angle, sure. Yeah.
Um, you won't recognise, well, so you won't, probably won't recognise the green monster, right. um, um, but you might recognise those little characters there. Who are they? I think the glasses on. I'll give you a clue. It's, wait, wait, where's Wally? It's, it's no, one. I'll give you a clue. It's a breakfast cereal. Who is it? Oh, oh Cocoa Pops. No, it's Snap, Crackle and Pop. Well, Rice Krispies. Rice Krispies, well done, yeah. <laughs> Rice Krispies. Now, that is a that is a cell. It's unusual in that it's on a, a sort of frosted cell. Yeah. Um, it's, they're usually clear, uh, like the ones we've got there. Um, but this is hand-painted. You see how delicate yeah. all yeah. of that is. Hand-painted from the rear. Oh, wow. So that they don't have brush marks. That's amazing. Um, but So they're given the... The, the, the uh, colour artist is given... Uh, a drawing that's just uh, the black outline. This is um, so the the sketches like you saw the Marge uh, picture just yeah. now. That's very sketchy. You couldn't colour in that because there's no definite lines. So that then goes to a cleanup artist, which makes it a single line. That's amazing. And then that goes to a, a colouring colour artist who fills in the paint yeah. in reverse order. Because if you, so, if you've got a colour on top of a colour. Like that one there has got has got the flesh tones on his face with yeah. little rosy cheeks. The rosy cheeks have got to go on first, haven't they? Oh, yeah, because yeah. the flesh tones got to go on from the back. So uh, and so and even something as simple as this, there's no get, getting away from animation. That's, That's still incredible. twelve frames, at least twelve frames per second. And like I said, with with Disney, it was twenty four. <laughs> yeah, double so, it, didn't he? Yeah. That's amazing. There's other fascinating things that are fairly logical when you look at them, but, but this, for instance, is a hand-painted, that's a hand-painted background from the Pink Panther, with the Pink Panther cell over the top, you just about see the outline of the plastic there. So the, the background is always bigger than the cell, because they want to move the character across the scene. But you see he's got no legs. Oh, yeah? Why do you think he's got no legs? Because the actual movement, the, the, the work involved in, in, in the whole foot cycle of walking across the oh, room right. is quite a lot of work. Yeah. So if you can film in from the knees up, you save yourself a great deal of work. That's amazing. Because yeah, so all you have in the finished film is the camera would be from the knees up and you just have a bobbing. I didn't even notice it, I don't think until you mentioned it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so then we've got another one over there where it's got, no, it's got no legs. But this is um, the the uh, this here is a reproduction of uh, what's called a, a layout drawing from the Pink Panther, and this is uh, a character. Mr. Cairo starts off from the right, runs across in front of the Pink Panther, uh, and puts his hand up. Um, and this has got all sorts of notes. Um, it says Cairo zips, so it's a zip movement from him moving from the right to the left. But there's also, it's a nice piece of history because there's also instruction there in Korean. Oh. Um, because for a very long time now, even going back to the uh, 80s or 90s, the, uh, a lot of the in-between drawings done by in-between artists would have been done by artists in Korea, purely for cost reasons. Yeah. They were cheaper. Yeah. Um, uh, so the, and there's instruction on the other Pink Panther one in Korean. Um, but I've developed a very strange hobby since having the gallery and that is when we get a piece of original art a, we've got a superman cell we've got this we've got um uh, he-man etc if i can i try and find the uh the film that it's from oh, that's awesome. to bring it to life yeah. you know so the, so that as a that's a series of instructions for animators to do everything to the next keyframe uh, and how long to do it in, how many frames, etc. There's all sorts of information there. Uh, and I, I wanted to find that, and I, f I actually found that one. And this, um, when, we, when we do that, uh, I've produced a, a short video of just that piece. Oh, that's cool. um, which, if you point your phone at that, yeah. you can go to the Blue Pencil website, and that is a, a very short video, edited, of just that scene, and then it's slowed down, uh, which I think we could probably see. Oh, you can put that on, can't you? And there it comes again, so I've edited it twice. So it's zip, zipping around in front of the bird. And this is slowed down a little bit. Yeah. So that's slowed down. Um, I tell you what, I will do the... Um, uh, I'll play that in a minute with the sound, because you need his voice. And this is a really slowed down one. And if you look at the middle... Let's play that again. 
this, I will put the sound I'll get, as soon as the sound goes from from the uh, music prep um, I'll just in case they the whole Pink Panther uh, oh, yeah, episode yeah, yeah, yeah. that this is from so here we go sorry So this is at the normal speed. Not so fast. And then this is slowed down a little bit. Still very fast, but not so, but slowed down. And then I've really slowed it down to show that it's only six drawings from the right hand side and his nose coming in round about now. And then in the middle look, there's he's got no legs. And then a few streaks, and then he puts his hand up and he tells them not so fast. And then there's the there's a close up of the when the bar goes away there's a close up of uh, his with no legs oh it's not going to go away uh, he's got no legs that was to accentuate the whole speed movement uh, and it's called smear shot oh, a cool. smear frame um, and uh, it's amazing it's only six drawings from uh, Mr Cairo's nose coming in on the right to him putting his hand up. But our brain sees it as one fluid movement. Yeah, yeah. We somehow need to see everything as a motion, as a proper yeah. motion. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, and if you notice that there's other things, it was it was cheap animation. It's 1995 yeah, or yeah. so. It was cheap animation uh, to feed the um, Saturday telly and uh, video and things like that. Uh, and uh, so it's not the best animation in the world, uh -huh. but. Uh, when I first showed it to Anna, um, that that clip, and she said, "Oh, that's lazy. They haven't even put the when he says not so fast the f yeah. um, um, mouth movement is not there." Um, typically, I mean, at the at the very least, uh, when you're animating uh, to uh, to to a voice to lip sync, there's at least half a dozen different mouth shapes yeah. that you need to animate um, to get it to look like proper lip sync. They've not done any of that with that Pink Panther. That Mr. Cairo's mouth is just it's just yeah. opening and closing not so fast well that's for two reasons one it was an awful lot cheaper to yeah, just yeah, do yeah, that yeah. but there's no point in lip syncing it to uh, an english soundtrack if it's then going to be dubbed into a hundred languages yeah, yeah. and sold all over the world so just doing this is plenty good enough that's so, cool um, and of course it made it a lot cheaper for them but that um that smear frame where uh, it could accentuate the movement there were other animators that took that really to the extreme. I mean, going back into the um, 30s and 40s. Uh, the 40s was um, uh, 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 Tex Avery, uh, who did a character called the Wolf. He was, uh, he was one of the first people to do that. You know, that whole exaggerated thing when the wolf sees a pretty girl, he goes, yeah, and his yeah, eyes yeah, come yeah. out on stalks. <coughs> some of the some of the smear frames from his it taken in isolation are just crazy. They're a, a mad mix of lines and colour that you wouldn't think would work. Yeah. But somehow he knew that putting that in is going to really accentuate that crazy movement. That, and and that, that obviously technology for cities back then obviously wasn't great a deal to what you got these days as well. So, so yeah, I, well, uh, uh, it, it said an awful lot about uh, about animation. Oh, well, oh, it's all done by computers. Yes, yeah. yes, of course, uh, of course, lots of, lots of, um, uh, uh, things are done differently don't, but they're done differently you still have to be able to draw yeah, when Anna yeah. animates now Anna still does animation commissions from time to time and, and uh, she still has to be able to draw it's just that she does it with a stylus on a Wacom tablet on a computer tablet yeah. so um, uh, and various aspects of it like the onion skinning that I suggested you know sort of um, earlier on where it's not the, the blue pencil you don't have to worry about that you can do your sketch lines and then you can go to another layer and put in the bits that you want to sort of clean up drawing. That's cool. And then you can get rid of that. But that's but you still have to be able to draw uh, to make it work, uh, and nothing will change that. But the reason that things like our original art are collectible these days is because there isn't an artifact. Nothing exists anymore with animation apart from a computer file. Yeah. Yeah, so Anna, she still does animation from time to time, yeah. and and she still get, and the skills are still the same, um, but it's done with uh, um, a, a stylus on a, a Wacom tablet on a computer yeah. tablet, and uh, it exists. So the final work only exists as a computer file. 
So the reason that our original art is as collectible as it is, and some is very, not ours, but some is very, very expensive, um, because uh, animation will never be done like this again. You know, and, and the way we mount the original art here is to show that that process. So yes, you have the drawing is lovely, but to have the drawing on its original peg um, paper with the location holes and all the notes that go around, like the one that we saw uh, for He-Man, all those notes around it to show the animators, the in-between artists, where it's going, etc. is all part of the story. Uh, for me, and, and it's what it, what makes it part of the history as far as oh, I'm concerned. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, obviously to this stage, obviously you've got like all different programs now. What sort of program would you use these days to do your animation? Because I've worked, well, I had an editor before I knew, help me out. He's yeah. done work on Blender. Yeah. So he's done, so, so, right. yeah. so, so he's done a little, so I've had, but I didn't do it, but yeah. one of my friends did it. So would you... Do you know any funds that you would use? I'm going to ask Anna what she uses. Oh, okay. Anna uses, when she does uh, animation commissions now, she uses Flash. Of course not. Um, uh, but even that has changed in that when I, I, I taught animation in a very, very rudimentary way many years ago mm -hmm. at Weymouth College. Uh, I'm not an animator, but uh, I, I did a, a short course for, uh, for the students there in basic animation. And this, that was 25 years ago. And it's very difficult for us to... Uh, to 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 make do proper animation, we could, the only way you could get good fluid animation was still at that time to shoot on film. Mm -hmm. uh, well, of course, it, it, there's no there's no immediate result there with film. You've got to wait. You've got to expose it. Hope that you get the exposure right yeah. on the drawings, etc. Then wait a couple of weeks for it to be developed and come back and see if you've got a result that you want. We couldn't shoot on video. The 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 only thing we could do very simply was quarter second animation that was very rough as well and quarter of a second four frames yeah. four drawings per second is not enough it's too jerky um but we uh these days it's it's wonderful for young people to have, to get into it whether it's yeah. stop frame animation like Wallace and gromit which obviously revived the whole stop frame genre beautifully or or drawn animation mm -hmm. um because you can do it literally for nothing there's, mm. there's, you can get yourself an old Android or borrow your mum's uh, Android or whatever uh -huh. and put a piece of free software on it that allows you to do stop frame animation. Um, and so a table lamp, a stand for your camera mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a rudimentary, if it's drawn animation, a very simple way of locating each drawing in the same place, which can be something as simple as the, as the, as the holes that you use from an yeah. office hole punch to make yeah. sure that, that each drawing is in the same place. Uh, the, anima the animation software is free. The phone that you do it on mm -hmm. is virtually free or could be pretty uh, hand me down from yeah, somebody. Amazing, and, and, you've got, and it even does onion skinning that we talked about earlier. Uh, so that you can an onion skinning in that uh, that sense is is you do it uh, you put a, a, a drawing in position and then when you do the next drawing obviously you want the next drawing to be slight in a slightly different position you want to know how far that movement has changed yeah. it, you can press a button and it will show you the previous image that you've just taken you know in uh, in uh, that's slightly grayed out so you can see exactly how far you've moved it it's amazing and yeah. you can do proper animation with equipment that costs nothing yeah yeah it's brilliant these days yeah amazing yeah so, so what special events do you hold do you do you, do you hold any special events well we we what we do uh, is from time to time is uh is have a display in the window unfortunately quite often it's not uh, the artwork is not for sale um obviously anna's got lots and lots of friends uh in the animation world that have worked on some very uh, prestigious projects um, uh, so like at Christmas we had uh, a display of original artwork from Raymond Briggs's The Snowman because oh, awesome. um, uh, a, a friend of ours uh, her dad worked on The Snowman it's 40, 40 years old it was this this Christmas yeah, right. um, I don't know where that 40 years has gone but uh, <laughs> um, yeah it's amazing so we had original drawings uh, from that if you just keep up in the window for a couple of weeks uh, just recently, Easter just gone uh, to tie in with the Easter Bunny thing. We had yeah. uh, we had some original art from Roger Rabbit, oh, uh, cool. which I'll, I'll show you. Um, the um, again, that was a friend of ours. She actually worked on worked on Roger Rabbit. 
with many, many other people. The facts and figures around Roger Rabbit are quite incredible. Uh, 236 animators wow. working for two years to make Roger Rabbit, and, and the budget just went out the window, but it was worth it in the end. Did yeah. they make it back? On, oh, yeah. yeah. On yeah. They, they, the, final, uh, the, budget, the original budget was doubled to 45 million, uh -huh. not adjusted for, for today's price. It was 45 yeah, million yeah. in 1988, I think. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Um, uh, and uh, but it grossed 200 million uh, awesome. at, the, at the box office. Um, but it was groundbreaking in that yes, we'd had animation working with live action before, mm -hmm. even going back as far as uh, Mary Poppins and things. But the difference was that the the camera for the live action stayed put. It was just it was locked, oh, wow. so that the scenery and everything stayed the same, and they animated the characters into that what made Roger Rabbit so groundbreaking and difficult was that the camera was moving like it would with any other live action live action film. Oh, so they cool. also had to put the animation in that. It was uh, a very, very difficult film to make. Oh, yeah. uh, and apparently quite difficult, as Bob Hoskins said, uh, trying, to, trying to actually act with something that's not, not there, there yeah. is uh, is quite because they, they had the briefcase scene, didn't they? Where they were winning the one briefcase where they had the filing system where, where, oh, yeah. where, where Roger Rabbit was kept going through round like that, was yeah. taking a yeah. fair bit of time. To yeah, the incredible amount of work. <clears throat> yeah, um, we yeah, so we 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 do that. We uh, so we hold a, an ex um, the, that uh, artwork in the window for a few weeks uh, just um, with the Roger Rabbit one we lost count of the number of people that wanted to buy it and <laughs> things like that can't be for sale and what we're hoping to do later this year uh, is have an exhibition um, it is linked to to animation but it's more of a conventional photography exhibition in, in a way uh, by uh, a man called Richard Wolfe who is uh, a very good friend of Anna's who was a Rostrum cameraman on, well, the most prestigious thing was, was that he's worked on is um, uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall. Yeah, awesome. Um, and uh, so he did Rostrum Cam all his whole career, um, uh, Rostrum camera work. Um, but in working in that, uh, in that time, he's, he's never, as many photographers, no matter what they do, what type of photography they do, he's never without a camera. Yeah. Uh, when we meet him now for a coffee or something, there'll be photographs of the event. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, he, in the 60s, he, um, he took, not candid photographs of stars, they knew they were having their photographs, taken, but relaxed photographs of stars, mm -hmm. um, including uh, pictures that we've got that we're hoping to hold an exhibition of later this year. Um, and we've got, uh, we've got this one of um, uh, John Lennon and uh, uh, Yoko Ono and um, uh, Wilco Johnson, who sadly died a, cu uh, a couple of, well, six months ago or something, okay. um, um, and Jimi Hendrix. Oh, awesome. Um, and, yeah, so these are photographs that Richard's taken. They will be available for sale, uh, limited prints um, of them, but they're, they're lovely photographs uh, of uh, taken at the time of these people. That's amazing. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they're limited, uh, limited edition prints, um, limited to 100, um, and uh, with each one um, with a handwritten note from Richard um, saying a little bit about, uh, about the picture. But it's a beautiful collection of work. Yeah, so this is another uh, example uh, of, a, of a smear drawing um, to accentuate the speed. And this is from All Dogs Go to Heaven. On its own, it makes no sense at all, but as a, as, as a, um, a sequence of frames um, from the actual film, it really accentuates that speed. So. Um, oh, this ties in with the special exhibition stuff that you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Do we do any special stuff? Yeah, this yeah. is a collection of, um, uh, of the puppets from uh, a film called Strike that was made about five years ago, I think. Just before lockdown. Just before lockdown, yeah. Um, um, and those are the puppets from it. The animator lent us the puppets. Uh, but if you get a chance to have a look at that, Barty, on, on, it's, it's, it's called Strike. Okay. Uh, and it's all about um, uh, a mole called Mungo 
uh, who finds he's very, very good at football, but his parents won't let him be a footballer because he is a mole and he has to dig holes. He's a miner. Oh, I see. Uh, but it's a great little story, uh, and it's nice to have the original models from it. That's awesome. Since having, the, since having the gallery, I've developed a bit of a strange uh, hobby, really, in that, uh, except before, I, I need to find the original film that a uh, piece of artwork was from. Uh, and this is an original cell uh, from uh, Superman the Animated Series, uh, 19, right about 1995. Uh, and the, we're not entirely sure that it's the original background. Um, Quite often, even when you buy uh, sometimes quite an expensive cell, it doesn't come with the original background. Because if you think about it, the, there will be dozens of, uh, of, of cells sharing the same background. So when you buy a cell, only one person can have the original painted background. Sometimes yeah. they'll copy it. Uh, but this is a, an original cell and it's authenticated by Warner Brothers. Uh, uh, a very stylish uh, revisit of the, of the whole Superman um, look. But I want to find that's a very uh, that's a very prominent pose. Uh, and looking at some of the other episodes, what that is is uh, the pained expression on his face is when Superman has been thrown across the scene by uh, by the by one of the super baddies, yeah. uh, slump hit a wall and slumped down. That pained expression you see it in other things, you see it in other scenes. Um, so I thought, oh well, it's big in frame as well. So this would take up most of the most of the frame. Um, it's got to be out there somewhere. Uh, but I found out that there are 25 hours of Superman the Animated Series, and this is one twelfth of a second. So Holy hell. If you if you if you'd like to give me if you'd like to give me a hand with that, Barty, at any time looking through 25 hours to try and find this one frame. And I got very, very close <laughs> to it. I got very, very close to it with one episode, but it isn't the right cell. If you go through it frame oh. by frame oh by frame, God. it is not the right cell. So I'm still trying to find that one. You get square eyes trying to find that. Sorry? You get square eyes trying to find that. Yeah, you would. <laughs> yeah. Oh my oh. This looks like it's a funfair background. Uh, yeah, we're not quite sure where that background. I mean, it's not a hand painted background. This is this is a, a laser copy of the hand painted background, which is sometimes how they come. Uh, uh, some of the ones that we've got, the Pink Panther things, and things, they are actually uh, the original hand painted backgrounds, but wow. they don't necessarily pack them up with the with the, the right cell. Oh, well, that's awesome. That one there, it's just flipped over, Barty. That was the not oh, big, no, the big one. That one there. That's uh, that Tex Avery, and that's a character called the Wolf from 1942. Oh, like wow. that. Uh, that, was the, uh, that was the guy that I was saying that that, that, that really stretched the, the the whole. I mean, he's looking at a pretty girl. They go like that, yeah. and the eyes coming out on stalks. <coughs> but he's the one that really pushed the idea of um, of a uh, of uh, 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 smear drawings you know, cool. to accentuate speed. Um, yeah, wherever we can, we come up with the story around the art. Like that's a reproduction of that layout drawing that I showed you earlier, yeah. and, it was, and as well as the QR code to actually um, see that 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 short clip, uh, there's an explanation of everything that's going on in that in that frame, even from the Korean thing to the blue pencil, to the, you know, it says uh, it zips into HG. Uh, so that the frame 8G is what they want. So it's ex ex all sorts of um, uh, instructions to the in-between artists as to where they want oh, that awesome. to go. How many hours would that have taken to draw, roughly? 
Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it, once people get, once animators get the character in their head, it's actually it's actually quite quick. But the the problem comes is when you've got multiple animators working yeah, yeah. on the same thing and keeping it looking the same, yeah. uh, which is why uh, they have uh, what's called model sheets. If I just show you this one here, yeah, that's really awesome. Uh, this one, I'll show you this one. Not uh, so something like this, just a reproduction, simple reproduction of a. Um, of a model sheet for Bender uh, that Anna drew a million yeah. times. Anna uh, uh, worked for Futurama for three years. Um, so this is Bender from all angles and with all sorts of details. So yeah. that all the animators, because dozens and dozens, of, well, over its life, hundreds of animators would have worked on this. And he's got to look the same because yeah. people will notice if he doesn't. Um, it's a bit like with The Simpsons. They, they, they were different at the early doors. The early, ones, to, early to, ones were very... To, the, the, pink, the Pink Panther is very different. You know, I yeah. was, when I found that, that clip from... Uh, when I was looking for that one from Mr Cairo, that was the first time, because I grew up being very, very, very old. Uh, I grew up with uh, 1960s Pink Panther. Oh, nice. And he was mute then. He was... Uh, way before your time but it were he didn't speak at all and I, in my opinion the pink panther was cool because he didn't speak oh. um but later on i don't know for what reason because it would make you know so that it would make more work because they've got to sell it to other countries so they'd have to dub it into other languages but the characters speak in it now i suppose it yeah. helps with new stories and things like that if they've got dialogue but he was cool because he didn't speak and i was quite shocked to find that the 1990s 90s pink panther yeah has got he's got a voice and in my opinion the wrong voice if he's going to be the, if he's going to be cool he's got to have a cool yeah, yeah. maybe isaac hayes voice or something like that he's got to be a cool soul singer's voice or something but he's got he's got quite a squeaky american accent which i don't think fits yeah, yeah. Um, but then that's just my my opinion that's cool yeah <laughs> For those who are watching, how would they be able to find this place then? Well, I hope we, we're, we're quite prominent now. Um, they, we're on the main high street. Yep. Uh, some of the things that generally people um, people know where they are. There's a very, very good wine shop to one side. There's a very, very good wine bar and restaurant uh, to the other side. Um, uh, if, uh, those people that know Honiton from a few years ago, they would have remembered the post office over the road, which the building's still there, but it's not the post office now. We're opposite that. Up on the same side as the church, yeah. uh, and a bit a bit further up. So we're not far out of, out of the, the town centre bit itself, just a little bit further up the road from the church. Um, yeah, and uh, you can't really miss us, because the Blue Pencil Gallery, there's a four-foot blue pencil outside on the window, uh, and uh, just lately, um, we've got a seven foot high Marge Simpson mm -hmm. with three feet of blue hair, which uh, you can't really miss. Uh, yeah. I've, a nice story about the Marge Simpson uh, is that I was very pleased with I made the Marge Simpson about, uh, about a month or so ago. Um, awesome. And um, a, a very good friend of Anna's, uh, who's still in LA, uh, she was the director on The Simpsons up until a couple of years ago. And Anna showed her the, the, the giant Marge that I made. And she said, wow, that's on model. On model means uh, what we were saying about the yeah, consistency yeah. of the of drawings, you know, getting animators to work, making it look the same. Yeah. On model means that it, it's it's true to the model sheet. And she said, that's on model. She said, I see some dreadful Marge Simpson. So I'm very pleased I've got the seal of approval yeah. from an ex-director of The Simpsons for my Marge Simpson. That's awesome. That really is awesome, isn't it? When people are visiting you and coming to Pine, what else would you recommend them do? Well, uh, I think they can make a day of it. Uh, Honiton Town Centre is, uh, is one of the few places that's still got an awful lot of independent shops of yeah. one sort or another. Uh, and for, for a long time has been uh, synonymous with, with antique shops. Uh, um, mm -hmm. And, and still, there still are a number of places and in nearby places like Ottery. Whatever, great places to eat, so you can really make a day of it. Yeah. Um, and come and visit us at the same time would be nice. Yeah, plenty, plenty, plenty of coffee shops around, isn't there? Plenty of coffee shops. Coffee yeah. shops and yeah. eateries. And places to get your hair cut, which obviously I'm <laughs> going to, it's not going to get rich off me particularly. <laughs> <laughs> There's this blue pencil up here. Yeah, that, that, that was an, a, a, a real to Karen Dash blue pencil given to us by the, uh, by the creator of Pepper Pig. Wow. That's awesome.
Thank you for taking us around there, the Blue Pencil Gallery. Very well. It was really, really good. Yeah, lovely. Thank Great you. to meet you. Uh, and you. If you just get yourself over here at the Blue Pencil Gallery here in Honiton. And don't forget, join, join the, the party party! party.